Christmas. And so, Merry Christmas. Please rise. Our opening hymn is O Come All Ye Faithful. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the Word became flesh, and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. The true light which enlightens everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his people did not receive him. As we gather together this Christmas, let us confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will 
and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Because of the Savior who is the Word made flesh and dwelt among us, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the Word, announce the grace of God unto all of you, and in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Father in heaven, you sent your only begotten Son as a descendant of Jesse, as you fulfilled your promise of a Messiah. Grant that we joyfully receive him as our Savior, the Word made flesh, who dwelt among us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated.
The Old Testament reading for the Nativity of our Lord is from Isaiah, the 52nd chapter. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news, who publishes peace, who brings good news of happiness, who publishes salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. The voice of your watchmen, they lift up their voice. Together they sing for joy, for eye to eye they see the return of the Lord to Zion. Break forth together into singing, you waste places of Jerusalem, for the Lord has comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord has bared his holy arm before the eyes of all the nations, and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 2. As for me, I have set my king on Zion, my holy hill. Why do the nations rage and the peoples plot in vain? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, Let us burst their bonds apart and cast away their cords from us. He who sits in the heavens laughs, the Lord holds them in derision. Then he will speak to them in his wrath and terrify them in his fury, saying, As for me, I have set my king on Zion, my holy hill. I will tell of the decree. The Lord said to me, You are my son. Today I have begotten you. Ask of me, and I will make the nations your heritage and the ends of the earth your possession. You shall break them with a rod of iron and dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Now therefore, O kings, be wise, be warned, O rulers of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the Lord, lest he be angry and you perish in the way, for his wrath is quickly kindled. Blessed are all who take refuge in him. As for me, I have set my king on Zion, my holy hill. Glory be to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The epistle is from Hebrews, the first chapter. Long ago, at many times and in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his Son, whom he appointed the heir of all things, through whom also he created the world. He is the radiance of the glory of God and the exact imprint of his nature, and he upholds the universe by the word of his power. After making purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. For to which of the angels did God ever say, you are my son, today I have begotten you. Or again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. And again, when he brings the firstborn into the world, he says, let all God's angels worship him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Please rise. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. The true light, which gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from heaven, full of grace and truth. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Together we confess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated, and I ask for the children to come forward for the children's message. Oh my goodness, look at all of you, how wonderful you look as you are preparing for Christmas celebrations. How many of you have some good food you're going to be eating sometime soon? Okay, you have some good food? What are you going to have to eat to eat, you know? It's just going to be good, right? Do you know what you're going to have to eat? You don't know? It's just going to be good, right? Who's cooking? Is everybody, is your grandma cooking, your mom cooking, your aunt cooking, everybody cooking? Tonight you're going to your... Okay, that's good. Okay, okay. So, has anybody anybody gotten a Christmas gift yet? Yeah. What did you get? What did you get? I had my grandma's uh, Christmas last yesterday night. Okay. Today you got boots. You like those boots? What did you get for Christmas? You get anything? Oh, okay. And a bike. And a bike. Okay. Did, what, did anybody else get something special for Christmas? No. Not yet. Okay. Well, you know what? Okay, but I'm gonna, this is party, but right now, 
Not right now. Later on, you're going to get something, okay? You know, some families open up Christmas gifts on Christmas Eve. Some families open up on Christmas Day. Some open up the day before all of that starts because of family. I actually grew up in a family where occasionally we even waited till the day after Christmas because family wasn't able to be there until then. And that was so difficult that it was Christmas Day and I couldn't open up my gifts. I would sit there the whole day and I'd stare at them under the tree. Can you imagine that? Okay, yeah, you can. Well, you know what? I'm going to tell you. Whether you've opened up gifts now, you've opened up earlier. I can look with my mom. Really? Okay. Or whether you're going to open up tomorrow or some other time. Did you know that you guys have already gotten the best Christmas gift of all? You know that. Jesus' birth. Now, is, it, is the Christmas gift just that Jesus was born as a baby? That's part of it, right? So did Jesus, we, we've talked about this before. You've always had the good answers. Did Jesus stay a baby? Okay, so he grew up into a grown man and he did great things for people on earth. I did not coach her in saying that, okay? You know, thank you for saying that. And you know what? And we know that Jesus is both God and man. Don't know how it works, but we know that it's true. And what, did he, what were some of the great things that he did? Who can tell me? What are the great things that Jesus did for us? He died on the cross. What did he do? He died for our sins. He died for our sins. What else did he do? He gave us life, he returned from the dead, and he gives us life. And, you know, when, when did you guys receive that gift the first time? Okay, we, we have, we've had this conversation. It wasn't millions of years, it was about 2,000 years. That might as well be a million of years. But you know what, it was 2,000 years or so ago, he died on the cross for your sins and he rose again. But you know when it was given to you, specifically to you? It was on the day that you were baptized. The day that you were baptized, absolutely. How many of you were baptized right here in this church? Some of you were? Some of you? Okay. Yeah. You know, that was that was kind of an exciting thing, I'll bet. For you and for you. She I, I that, and you know what? I got to baptize her. I gave her a good Christmas gift, didn't I? So you know what, whether or not, whether or not you have opened your gifts or not, you all, each of you, including everybody here, has already received the best Christmas gift of all. You are? Okay, that's good. You all have received the greatest Christmas gift of all, and his name is Jesus. And so I can proclaim very loudly and clearly, Merry Christmas. And you guys can say, Merry Christmas. Okay, you guys can go ahead and go back to your seats, and we're going to continue with our sermon hymn.
Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. How many of you remember your earliest Christmas gift? I'm not sure how old I was exactly. I couldn't have been much older than three. I know it had to have been before my fourth birthday. So maybe three and a half-ish, maybe? That's the first Christmas I think I can remember. And I remember on that Christmas morning getting a plastic toy train set. Now, I'm not talking about one of those model trains, you know, like HO trains. I'm talking about something different. I'm not talking about a Lionel train. I'm talking about a train that is really good for a tiny little boy. Now, my parents, for whatever reason, didn't get me the wooden version, you know, like Thomas the Train, but they got me a plastic train set. It had these little plastic tracks you could sort of just clip together, link together. Oh, I played with that forever and ever and ever and ever. And I will tell you, I know for a fact, if I were to go hunting for it, it is in my house someplace. It is part of my emotional Christmas baggage. Does anybody have anything like that that they remember, that a favorite gift? So who can remember the first gift that they received? Well, I will tell you, there is even a greater gift that I have received and you have received. In fact, we have received it every day since that moment of our baptism, every time that we remember what Christ Jesus has done for us. And I'm going to tell you, in my family, part of the way that we remembered that was the fact that my grandpa, that sonorous-voiced old pastor, before we would open up any gift, before we would eat any kind of food, before we would do anything at all that was Christmassy, he would sit down in the old overstuffed green mohair chair. You can only picture it in your mind. Grandpa would sit down there and he would have this. Now, as a child, I thought that this was a Bible that was this big, but actually it's only about this big. It is a big black King James Bible. But he would sit down and before we would do anything, he would read out of that Bible these words from Luke chapter 2 about Jesus' birth. He would begin, in those days, Caesar Augustus, and he would tell us one more time, about the birth of Jesus. The gift my grandparents and my parents and my church gave me that started all the way back then on that very first Christmas most certainly created a gift that was greater than any other gift I had ever gotten. It is the gift of the light of Christ that cast out all of the darkness of sin and death. You know, we live in a day and age these days when it is very possible for people to gather together to celebrate on December 25. They would have all of the trees and the decorations and the music, but they might have little to no idea of what the day is all about. Perhaps it is a day of family and food and gift giving full of sentimentality that we would want to repeat each year. And in fact, that's one of the things that I think most of us enjoy about Christmas is that we're going to be together with family for good or for ill. We're going to have family there and we're going to have food and we have wonderful decorations and there's a lot of excitement. But you know, there's more. Perhaps a day it's full of Santa Claus and reindeer. And you know what? I've always enjoyed Santa Claus and I've enjoyed reindeer, but again, there's more. Perhaps it's a day to think about peace in the world, but the question then really is, where does that peace come from? Does it come from way down deep inside of us? Stop and think about that for a moment. How much peace do we really truly have 
way down deep inside of us. Have we on our own in this world that we have ever have been able to create our own peace? I think there are things that we can do that might make our lives more peaceful. There are things that we can do that might make other people's lives more peaceful. But I'm talking about that true inner peace where we realize that we're okay, that there are no problems. Can we create that on our own? So as I think about Christmas, I'm so glad that my family made Christmas faith a part of what we did, that we knew why we celebrated what we celebrated. And it began by introducing us to the baby in the manger, Jesus. During these last several weeks of Advent, we have spent several weeks preparing to look into the manger to see Jesus. We looked at a manger and we saw a baby, most certainly. But we also have had God tell us who that baby is. Now, I'm not going to repeat to you everything that I have said over the last four weeks. But I think it might be helpful for us to take a look at what the gospel reading for tonight says and to see what it has to tell us about Jesus. First of all, we hear in that reading that Jesus is God. He was with God in the beginning and he is God. And here we hear hints of the Trinity, that God, the creator of all things, loved his human creation so much and that he took on human life and he lived a human life like you and like me. And he did this in spite of our sin. In fact, he did it because of our sin. In our sin, there was no way that we could ever regain fellowship with God the Father. So God the Father did something about it. That God the Father sent his son Jesus. There's no way that we can get rid of the darkness in our life. So God the Father sent the light. There was no way that we can get rid of death in our life, so God the Father sent life himself. God the Father sent Jesus. God the Father sent God the Son, God himself, to take on our human life, to dwell among us, to bring us life instead of death, to bring us light instead of darkness. Jesus, God the Son, makes us his children. It's not a human decision. It's not a decision of the pastor. It's not a decision of anybody else. It's not a decision of our ability to make it happen. It is entirely the work of God the Father working in our life through that message about Christ Jesus. He has done it for us, and he has set us free from the bondage to sin. Of course, you know, he didn't do it as a baby. I make that point again and again and again at Christmas time because, you know, so often at Christmas we focus on the little baby and, you know, that's wonderful because that is a reminder that God took on human flesh, that God became one of us in every way that we are. And the Bible says he was like us in every way except he did not sin. But, you know, the, the fact is he didn't stay a baby. He was grown up when he went to the cross he became one of us. He knew our life. He understands us. Jesus now, because he has lived a life like yours and mine, he understands what it's like to be tired and he understands what it's like to be hungry. And he even understands what it's like to be angry. The Bible says that he has been angry, but he did not sin in that anger. Unlike me, that when I get angry, I tend to be sinful. Jesus, however, understands the problems and the troubles that we have and that he has paid the price for it all on the cross. He has done it because we can't. We are forgiven. Our sin is washed away. No longer is our sin held against us. God the Father has done all of this through God the Son. And it was placed in our life in baptism. And it has been nurtured in our life through his word. And it has been strengthened in our life through the Lord's Supper. It is ours. 
Even though we have trouble, even though we have conflict, even though we maybe have lots of worries, even though we mess up, even though we have darkness, even though we confront death, even though we sin, we have a Savior, Jesus, who takes care of us. He is with us. We are not alone. And all, it all began on that very first Christmas, and it began with a baby. It began with God the Father loving us so much that he sent his only begotten Son, God himself, to live with us, to dwell with us, so that we can dwell with him forever and ever. Christmas gifts are wonderful. You know, we talked a little bit with the children about whether or not any of them had opened up some gifts. A couple had opened up a gift or two. How about you? Has anyone opened up any gifts yet? If you have, raise your hand. I'm just curious. I, this has nothing to do with the sermon. I'm just curious. I see some people who've raised their hand. But you know, whether you've opened gifts now or you're going to open them up later, you already have received the greatest Christmas gift of all. And this evening we know what that gift is. We know who that gift is. That gift that was given to us through our parents and our grandparents and our pastors and our Sunday school teachers and our neighbors and our friends and our co-workers who have proclaimed again and again and again the good news of great joy that we have a Savior who was born for us. We have Jesus, God with us, who brings us light into our darkness, who brings life to our death. Merry Christmas. Now may the Christmas peace, which passes all our human understanding, may it keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen. We continue with the offertory. rise for prayer. We come before our Lord in prayer in the name of the Word who became flesh and dwelt among us. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. 
We come before you, eternal Lord, rejoicing that you are the same yesterday, today, and to forever, with mercies new each morning, in the name of the Word who became flesh and dwelt among us. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. We give you thanks for this world you have created us. Empower us to be faithful stewards of your creation in the name of the Word who became flesh and dwelt among us. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. We are grateful that you sent your Son to shine in our lives, darkened by sin, bringing forgiveness. Grant that we shine as lights in this dark world, always bearing witness to Christ in the name of the Word who became flesh and dwelt among us. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Have mercy on us as your children, bless with healing and restoration those who cry out for you for aid, especially we remember tonight Steve Hildenberg and be with Sally, his wife, as she is with him. In the name of the word who became flesh and dwelt among us. We have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. As we celebrate the birth of your Son, we are thankful for your glory that has been revealed in him in the name of the Word who became flesh and dwelt among us. Together we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. In just a moment, we will have the candle lighting, and as we begin to sing Silent Night, I encourage you at that moment to turn your candles on. That way, as we dim the lights, you will be able to see the, the words of the hymn, but also it's a reminder. The light of these candles will indeed illumine our faces, and they symbolize the light of Christ a child in the manger at Bethlehem, a savior suffering our death on the cross and soon to come from his throne on high as judge of all. He is our light here on earth and the eternal light of who enlightens heaven where there is no need of candle or sun. Rejoice for the light of the world has come who transforms us with the brightness of his glory.
And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.